Sometimes during accident investigations, I wish there was some way to hit the rewind button so that everyone associated with the accident could analyze the decision making and performance of the pilot, flight crew, mechanics, dispatchers, and managers, and learn from mistakes so that that accident wouldn't occur. Of course, that's not possible. There is no rewind button. But there is a very valuable tool available to operators to help pilots and flight crews to assess their decision making and to ensure pilots maintain proficiency in emergency procedures including the recognition of degraded visual conditions and the recovery from VMC into IMC conditions. That tool is the use of flight simulators. We'll briefly look at three accidents and see how the use of flight simulators might help prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. The NTSB recently investigated a HEMS helicopter flight that experienced an engine flameout due to fuel exhaustion, and as a result of a failed auto rotation, all four people on board received fatal injuries. The helicopter was traveling about 116 knots at 300 feet AGL when the flameout occurred. The simulator flight evaluations conducted during the investigations demonstrated that it was possible to maintain rotor RPM and execute a successful auto rotation with touchdown occurring about 25 seconds after engine failure. However, a successful auto rotation was only possible if simultaneous flight control inputs of down collective and aft cyclic were made within about one to two seconds after the engine failure. If these flight control inputs were not promptly made, the result was a rapid decay in rotor RPM and impact with terrain in an average time of four to five seconds after the simulated engine failure. The pilot's auto rotation training in a helicopter was conducted over an airport during initial and recurrent pilot training. It involved lower speeds in the vicinity of 80 knots where less aft cyclic is needed to enter an auto rotation, so the practice auto rotations he performed had been less dependent on immediate coordinated application of down collective and aft cyclic. Thus, the pilot's auto rotation training was not representative of an actual engine failure at cruise speed and did not prepare him to respond appropriately to such a scenario. But in a flight simulator, engine failures can be induced unexpectedly in any flight condition. Additionally, the pilot's flight control inputs can be more aggressive in a simulator, whereas in a helicopter, aggressive control inputs can cause the main rotor and the transmission to overspeed resulting in costly repairs. The NTSB has recommended that operators use flight simulators for scenario-based training for HEMS operations. The following accident investigation highlights the advantages of scenario-based training. The accident involved the use of night vision goggles during a HEMS flight that resulted in a controlled flight into terrain and all three crew members on board received fatal injuries. The pilot was very experienced, having over 17,000 hours of total flight time, over 5,000 hours of helicopter time, and over 3,000 hours of night time. The pilot had received NVG training in the military a number of years before he had been hired as a HEMS pilot. He had recently been hired by the operator and had passed his PIC line check and received his NVG training about a month after his PIC check. On the three nights that he trained using Anvis 9 NVGs, the moon illumination was 83%, 91%, and 100% respectively. On the night of the accident, just after a week after receiving his proficiency check for NVGs, Astronomical data revealed that there was zero moon illumination at the time of the accident. Dark, rolling terrain prevailed in the accident area with ambient starlight, chemical light sticks, and infrared strobes being the only light available for the goggles to amplify. The use of simulator scenario-based training can provide pilots additional opportunities to train using NBGs in various light conditions. Using a stair-step approach to training, the pilot can experience the effect of low moon illumination and deteriorating weather conditions and its effect on NBG operations. The NTSB strongly believes that increased use of helicopter simulators for HEMS pilot training is essential to improve pilot knowledge and skills for inadvertent flight into instrument meteorological conditions. Unfortunately, helicopter accidents involving VMC and IMC continue to be one of the biggest challenges of HEMS operations. One of my colleagues investigated the following accident. The pilot held an instrument rating and had previously flown helicopters in IFR conditions, but was not current at the time of the accident. The helicopter was not certificated for flight in IFR, but had sufficient instrumentation to operate in the event of an inadvertent encounter with IMC. On the pilot's last Part 135 check ride, which occurred nine months before the accident, he satisfactorily demonstrated inadvertent IMC loss of control recovery. On the first legs of the accident flight that night, the pilot experienced VMC conditions along his route. Before his return to base two hours later, the pilot was aware that the weather was deteriorating along his route of flight and was even encouraged by another base manager to stay at another base overnight, but the pilot decided to continue the flight. 
During the return to his base, the weather had deteriorated and thunderstorms and rain showers extended over the route of flight. Flight track data showed that the majority of the flight was flown below 1,000 foot AGL. During the last eight minutes of the flight, the helicopter was occasionally below 800 feet and eventually impacted the terrain. The accident investigation revealed that the pilot's decision to continue the VFR flight into an area of IMC resulted in spatial disorientation and the loss of control of the helicopter. These accidents highlight the value of using simulators for helicopter pilot training and decision making. Scenario-based simulator training can provide the pilot and others associated with the flight an opportunity to analyze the decisions made during a simulator flight that might help prevent an accident from actually occurring. In addition, it enables the pilots to train in skills that are too risky to perform in a real helicopter, such as the low altitude engine failures, NVG use in degraded visual conditions, and VMC into IMC flight. My hope is that all operators, regardless of the size of the operation, incorporate simulator training into their flight training program and reduce the risk of being involved in a helicopter accident.